What is in a name? What is your name? My name is Mark Edward Daniels. Have you ever looked up the meaning of your name, the significance of what your name, what it stands for? Why don't you do that? You may be surprised. In the old times, <laughs> before I was born, hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, there was real meaning in names. You may be surprised if you look up the original meaning of your name, if you go back a couple thousand years, wherever it originated from, that your name fits you. Go ahead, get on Google and look up the meaning of your name. My first name, Mark, was a very common Roman name. It means to be consecrated to the God of war, to be warlike. I don't think I ever looked that up until a couple years ago, but it fits me because from the time I was young, I used to play with uh, <laughs> trash can lids like it was a shield and I would get a stick as a sword. And as I grew up, when people picked on me, I wanted to fight, but I was afraid. So in my early teen years, I got the local street tough guy to teach me how to fight. And he knocked me down a few times, and so I got to where I wasn't afraid to fight. And then I went on to be an amateur and a professional boxer. I still spar with my sons. I love to fight. I've loved fighting all my life. Does that mean I'm not afraid or not nervous before a fight? Sure, I'm nervous, I'm afraid. That's a normal part of fighting. Anytime before any kind of a battle or even an interview for a job, you're going to be nervous. But all my life, I've loved fighting. Now, is that a coincidence that my name means to be consecrated to the God of war, to be warlike? Maybe it is. Maybe it's just a coincidence. But it's one that I like. I've always been a warrior. But I never wanted to go to war. So if you believe in past lives, they have what they call past life regression. A lot of people have done that. I did that once. I won't go into details, but I said the same thing everybody says. Well, it's just my imagination. And maybe it was. Your life is all imagination. Everything you see today, you've thought about or imagined before it came to pass. But you just don't remember it. Your life is directed by the thoughts and imaginings you have. So, does my name match up with me? Was it matched up with me before I was born? I don't know. I choose to believe it is. I think it makes life a little more interesting. And I have the choice, just as you do, to believe however you want to. And all your actions will stem from your beliefs. If you believe you'll be successful, guess what kind of actions you'll take? You'll take actions of a successful person. That's why you hear this fake it until you make it, act as if. A lot of times you can't feel your way into good acting, but you can act the part and then you start to feel that way. Act as if you are the man you want to be. And you may say to me, well, how can I do that? How can I act like I'm successful when they're coming to shut my electric off today. Or if I don't find the money to pay my water bill, it's going to get cut off. That's a difficult situation, I know. Have I ever had my water cut off? I don't think so. <laughs> I've come close a couple times. My electric, I don't know. I think I had one or the other shut off at one time in my life because I put the bill off, then I forgot to pay it. So, but I don't remember specifically, but I've been in tight financial situations before. 
And the normal thing to do when you're in those situations is to focus on the problem. But as I spoke of yesterday, if you watch successful people, they do not focus on the problem that they're in in the moment. They focus on their desires and what they want their life to be like. And that's what they talk about. They think about it. They focus on that. And that's what you have to do if you desire to be successful. Something beyond what you are today. So if it takes something like looking up your name, let's say you look up your name and let me see, my middle name is Edward. It means wealth, fortune, prosperous, guardian, and protector. Okay, now you can read that. Maybe your name is Edward. Maybe your first name is Edward, your last name, your middle name, whatever. You can look at that and say, ah, that doesn't mean anything. Look at my life. I'm poor, I'm broke. I can't even get a date. Who am I going to protect? I can't even find a girl to marry and have kids. You can look at it that way, or you can look at it discovering that that is your the meaning of your name today, and you can run with that and believe that, hey, I'm supposed to be more than I am. I'm not expressing everything that I can be. Many of the great people in history, I think Alexander the Great, he grew up in a time where they said if he could cut the, what is, was, it was a knot, or whoever could loose the knot, I can't remember what the name of it was, but there was a knot tied in a rope. And whoever would loose that would be the leader of the country or would become great. Well, the story goes he cut it with his sword. I think that's how it goes. So he loosed the knot. And he believed that he would be a great leader, and thus he became so. Now, did it have anything to do with the knot, him loosening the knot or cutting the knot? No, some people could have said, well, he cut it. That's not the same thing as loosening in it but yet he believed that and we all know the story or most of us do of Alexander the Great you can look it up if you don't know it I mean that was thousands of years ago and people still know his name his belief some people believe in a horseshoe a horseshoe above the door is good luck is it the horseshoe or is it the belief in the horseshoe? Some people believe in God. Is it God or is it the belief in God? Christians believe in Jesus. Jesus said, according to your faith or your belief, be it done unto you. It is done unto you. Your deep subconscious beliefs will draw into your life whatever you believe. If you believe you're meant to be a great success, you will become that. If you believe you're meant to be a dismal failure, never being able to accomplish anything, that's what your life will turn out to be. Because there could be opportunity right before your eyes and you won't see it because you don't believe it's there. I use this example quite a bit. But I know all of us have had some item like our keys or something that we had and we put it down somewhere. <clears throat> we know, <clears throat> excuse me, we know we put it down in the house somewhere and we need it, but we can't find it. We're looking everywhere for it and we can't find it. We're getting frustrated. It's lost. <clears throat> some places we've looked twice. We've moved books around, papers. We can't find it. And then your wife or your kid or somebody else walks in and they ask you, what are you doing? I can't find my keys. I had them here just an hour ago and I can't find them. I've looked everywhere. I got to get to that appointment. They walk over to the table and they say, here, they're right here on the table. And you looked in that very spot and all over the table, as a matter of fact, two or three times and you didn't see them. How can that be? They were right in front of your eyes. We have what we call lacunas in our mind or it's, a, it's something we create. It's a mental block. You couldn't see those keys because for you, they weren't there. Your mind blocked them out because you believed they were lost, but they were right in front of your eyes. So do you think you see things that are out there? No, everything you see, everything you experience is within your mind. 
those keys were not there for you because your belief made them invisible. But the other person walking into the room believed that they could find them, and they did. They didn't have this lacuna, this mental block. And so it is if you believe that you're never going to succeed or you can never accomplish anything. You could have success, opportunity right in front of your very eyes and you will not see it. And the opposite is true. If you believe you're going to be a great success, you will see opportunities and avenues for that success because you will not be blinded to them. It really is just that simple. Now, changing your beliefs is not sometimes so simple or easy because we have developed these beliefs from the time we are born. Most of them before we ever had an opportunity to decide whether it was true or false. We go through a certain period in our lives called the impression period. From the time we're zero till about seven years old, our conscious mind, the gatekeeper of the subconscious, which is what really runs your life, does not differentiate between the true and the false. So everything you hear from authority figures, people that supposedly love you, your parents, you believe that. So you pick up their beliefs and those beliefs start to form a reality in your life. A reality which can be very difficult to break, but it can be broken through the same power that created it. Repetition, auto-programming, or it's called autogenic programming, like hypnotism, except you do it to yourself. I think all of us have seen, or at least the people on my channel who are somewhat awake, the power of repetition through the last two or three years. All the news channels, all the mainline news channels, everywhere you go had the same repetition, tap, 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 it's dangerous, take this to save yourself, save your friends, over and over and over and over again. And look how it worked. Even though it's been proven to have harmed some people, they convinced many people to take this certain action to protect themselves because the fear was embedded into people so great. People believed that there was a great danger because of the constant repetition of the message. It's dangerous. It's destroying people. It's going to, you know the message. You would have had to have been deaf, dumb, and blind to not have heard it for the last two or three years. And as time passed, we started looking around and we weren't seeing the evidence of what we were being told. Many of us thought something isn't lining up here. So we started to believe something else. I was like most people at first, I was a little nervous and concerned about it. I took some extra precautions, but when I looked out in my outer world, I kept going out. I was able to, where I live here, it was no big deal. So there were a lot of people in fear, but I looked around and I didn't see evidence of what they were saying was happening. So this changed my belief that it was possible that maybe they weren't telling us the truth. Or maybe their perception was different from what reality was. Or more importantly, the reality I choose to experience because you do experience the reality that you believe exists. Once again, that you believe exists. Those two years where it was really challenging for a lot of people were the best two years in business I ever had in my life. It didn't affect me whatsoever, the restrictions, the mandates and all that. I did have to comply when I went to get a haircut by putting something over my face. <laughs> Other than that, I mean, I couldn't travel for a couple of years because I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to um, go along with the agenda. So I chose to stay home. But other than that, I, it had no effect on me. Actually, it was a positive effect on my, my business. And it taught me tolerance, patience, and love and understanding for the people who were very afraid and who actually 
tried to force their ideas and their beliefs on the people who didn't look at things the way they did. But I have great empathy for some of you people who actually lost your jobs because you didn't comply, and I respect you for your courage. And empathy for the people who followed the agenda and now are having some serious health problems because they took those measures. Measures that were based on a fear that was generated in them by the people who wanted them to be afraid. I'll say it that way. But it all goes back to your belief. As I started out this, the meaning of your name. Find out what the meaning of your name is and see if it doesn't if it isn't congruent with your lifestyle, your goals, your ideas, your beliefs. It may or may not be. Mine just happens to be, or at least I believe it is, and I choose to act on that belief. I'm here today because I've learned in life that it's all about what you give away in life. You can't take it with you, that's what they say. But I beg to differ with that. You can take with you whatever you give away in life. That is the only thing you will take with you. The things you give away in life. And I'm not talking about money or material things, although I believe it's good to give that away also. With discretion. But what you give away from the very depth of your being to help other people. And it's my hope too, and my intention to inspire, enlighten, and build up humanity. And guess what? My 1,690 subscribers, we're moving up there. You are that very humanity that I desire to inspire, enlighten, and build up. And what's the motive behind that? Guess what? Whatever I give away comes back to me multiplied. Do I want to be inspired? enlightened and built up? Of course I do. But if I want that, I must give that to you freely, expecting nothing back from you, knowing that God repays or the universal laws operate in such a way that whatever I give out there will come back to me multiplied. And that's the secret, although it's really not a secret. That's the secret to success in life at least the kind of success I desire. Many times people look at success as the money, the woman, the house, the car, the job, the power, the fame. These things are all icing on the cake. The success happens during the journey. The joy is truly in the journey. I say this all the time. If you're not enjoying this very moment, listening to me, of course. <laughs> You're not going to enjoy when you get that job, when you get that money, when you get that house, when you get healthy. I know it's very difficult when you're in pain to enjoy your life. I know some of you may be suffering some... Let me, let me mention this one guy. I follow him on Instagram. He follows me. He's, he had an accident. He broke his back. Ugh. And he's in a wheelchair. And he showed a picture of his transformation the other day from two years, and that guy is in shape. I'm, I'm a little jealous because he's more cut than I am. <laughs> he works out. Now that guy's an inspiration. He knows by helping other people and inspiring other people, he himself is inspired. He certainly inspired me. If he can come back and be that motivated from that type of an injury where he will never probably walk again, then what are my little aches and pains, which I've had for the last, I had an injury about a year ago and can't lift like I want to. Every time I start to do it, I have some serious pain, et cetera, et cetera, whatever. But if I'm not enjoying today, if I'm thinking, well, when I can work out again, when I can do this again, then I'll be happy. No, if you're not happy today, if you're not fulfilled today, if you're not succeeding today, Success is the progressive realization of a worthy goal or ideal. You will not be happy when you get to the point, when you get to your goal. You'll get elated. You may feel some temporary joy, 
but it will soon fade. The achievement of the goal is only icing on the cake. The cake is the journey. It's the people you meet, the relationships you build, the trials, the errors, the disappointments, the failures, the victories, the successes. It's all that. If you're grinding, 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 working 12, 16 hours a day, which there's the people out there that say you need to do that just to get to that point where you've got it and you finally made it. You know what's gonna happen when you get there? It's gonna be great for a few hours or a day, maybe a week. And then you're gonna think, as I did once in my life, is this all there is? No, that's not all there is. But if you think that working hard like that is a means to an end and you're not enjoying the present moment, it'll leave you feeling flat and empty and wondering, is this all there is? So what do you believe today? Sit down and make a list of your beliefs. And if you have beliefs that disempower you, work to change those beliefs. And how can you do that? By stating the opposite verbally and thinking the opposite. And as you do, you will start to see evidence of the opposite of your disempowering belief. It's not gonna happen today and maybe not tomorrow, and maybe not in a few weeks, maybe not in a couple months. It may take six months, it may take a year. But if you're persistent in voicing the belief you desire to have, instead of thinking about, talking about, and stating the disempowering belief, eventually you will come to experience your new belief and you will take actions on that belief. And more and more will manifest in your life and become a reality. That's how you got the beliefs that you have today, by repetition. That's how everyone believed things were so terrible in the last couple, two or three years, by repetition. And some people still believe it, even though if you look for the facts and the numbers, they state something completely different. So, what do you choose to believe today? What type of life do you choose to have today? The choice is yours. That's your free will. Use it wisely. I appreciate you guys being here. I hope this has been of value to you. Share it with a friend if you think it may help them. If you would like to get my help personally, you can contact me at marksinspirationalguidance at gmail.com from our website at marksinspiration.com. I'm going to go see if I can do a little outside work today. I believe <laughs> it may clear up later. All right, take care. Thanks again for joining me, and I will see you next time.